The song All You Wanna Do is an emotional turning point in Six the Musical. Katherine Howard literally breaks down by the end of it. And though the song is mostly an upbeat pop tune, it features an unusual chord progression that has disillusionment and disappointment built into its fabric. This is how All You Wanna Do works. Now, before I tell you about the chord progression, I want to tell you where this chord progression comes from, namely one of the queen inspirations that Katherine Howard in Six is based on. Casting calls for Six the Musical revealed that Katherine Howard is an amalgamation of Britney Spears and Ariana Grande. And when Six creator Toby Marlowe put forward a dream cast, Miley Cyrus's name also got thrown into the mix. Britney Spears, Ariana Grande, and Miley Cyrus. What do they all have in common? Well, they were all young pop stars. Britney joined the Mickey Mouse Club at the age of 11, Ariana was on Broadway in the musical 13 at the age of 15, and then soon joined Nickelodeon's Victorious. Miley was cast in Hannah Montana at the age of 12. Similarly, Katherine Howard begins her song All You Wanna Do by recounting her life starting at the age of 13. And I was 13 going on 30. But more than being about young stars, the song All You Wanna Do is about being young and being exploited, manipulated, and abused at that vulnerable age. But as vulnerable as she might seem to us now, that isn't necessarily the way Katherine Howard was viewed historically. Various historians have called her a juvenile delinquent, empty-headed wanton, stupid, and those are the nice descriptions. This is theater historian and writer Margaret Hall, who you might remember from my previous Tony Awards video. Howard has actually had the most interesting arc over the last century in terms of being reclaimed by the populace and by historians in particular. Whereas in the centuries after her death, she was seen as something of a harlot who brought it on to herself. People have been much more charitable in their interpretations of her actions and her history, and that is reflected directly in Six and in the use of All You Want to Do. She's someone who was used by people rather than being some Machiavellian figure, which is how she was positioned in early times. We get to Katherine Howard, and we see a girl who's trying to be that sort of fun, flirty, upbeat thing, and then when the reality would start to sink in at the end, you watch the bottom drop out beneath her, and you feel the real intensity of the grief and the screaming, and it becomes this cathartic moment within the show where it's not fun and games anymore. The stakes are legitimately life and death, and a young girl is about to lose her head. And that's exactly the point Six co-creator Lucy Moss, who has a degree in history from Cambridge, wanted to make. She says, I had an idea of how I wanted to demonstrate that Katherine Howard isn't this kind of airheaded, slutty teenager, but she's actually an abused child. And one of the best ways Marlo and Moss demonstrated that was through the use of a metaphor. As I discussed in my video on how rap works in Hamilton, a metaphor allows for an audience today to understand what might otherwise feel really old and unfamiliar. In Hamilton, that meant learning about the Founding Fathers through the metaphor of hip hop. This is a story of America then told by America now. We're gonna use every tool at our disposal to eliminate the distance between a modern audience and something that happened 200 some odd years ago. Similarly, by placing Katherine Howard's fashion and music in the style of a young pop star today, they could draw upon the parallels in the way we perceive these young women culturally. So they gave Katherine Howard Ariana's famous ponytail and her pink skirt. And they based All You Wanna Do on one of the most iconic songs by Queenspiration. It's Britney, bitch. Toxic. Put your door at the toxic. First of all, Toxic and All You Wanna Do share the same tempo, around 143 beats per minute. But what I wanna talk about is the fact that they use the same chord progression. Minor one to major three, to major two, to flat major two, and back to minor one. So yes, the two songs would fit together quite easily in a mashup.
But why would Marlo and Moss choose this chord progression to imitate? After all, Britney has a lot of other iconic songs to reference. In fact, Oops I Did It Again, Baby One More Time, and three other Britney Spears songs are featured in the new Max Martin musical and Juliet. <laughs> The stage musical Moulin Rouge also features Toxic and the all Britney Spears jukebox musical Once Upon a One More Time is said to be Broadway bound as well, meaning that pretty soon Broadway could have four Britney infused musicals. Six however is much more subtle with its Britney inspired pop, choosing the chord progression and tempo of Toxic as its artistic entry point. But why Toxic? Well I think on one level it's because Katherine Howard is describing a series of toxic relationships she's been in. But going deeper it's appropriate because the Toxic chord progression perfectly maps out Katherine Howard's journey and is amazingly consistent with her lyrics as well. The progression begins with an upward leap of the minor 1 chord to the major 3 chord. Now that leap is actually going to a chord known as the relative major. I did a quick technical explanation of the relative major in this video. The relative major is essentially the flip side of a minor chord with the same number of sharps or flats. In this case B minor and D major both have two sharps. Translation, the D major scale and B minor scales have the exact same notes. The only difference is B B minor starts on the B and D major starts on the D. But in less technical terms, going to the relative major implies a lift, both because the bass note is literally going up higher, but also because we're being lifted from a sad sounding minor chord up to that chord's most closely related, happier sounding major chord. If a minor chord is a frown, going to its relative major turns that same frown upside down. For example, in another video I showed how in the Schuyler sisters from Hamilton, we get Peggy being negative on a minor chord while Eliza and Angelica respond to her with positivity using the relative major chord like this. Daddy said to be home by sundown. Daddy doesn't need to know. For Katherine Howard, going up to the relative major is also a lift, but this time it's more of an emotional high. The positive leap up in Katherine Howard's situation is how good she feels initially when she receives attention from a man in power over her. However, like being high, there comes a point where you come down. That upper major 3 chord doesn't last either. It slips, as Katherine Howard realizes the only thing these men wanted was to use her to satisfy their own desires, far from the genuine connection they promised her. The chords underneath slip down incrementally, half step by half step, until we are back where we started at the negative sounding minor 1 chord. This progression of a series of major chords slipping down to a minor chord is reflected in Katherine Howard's lyric. Went from major to minor, C to D. And when she says C to D, well, I'll let you figure out the innuendo part of it, but musically, it's actually correct too. We're in the key of B minor, and the major three chord is a leap up to D major. Now how do you go up from B to D? You get there by going up to C, to C sharp to D, or C to D. Now you might be thinking this chord progression probably shows up everywhere, so it's not really special here. It's everywhere! But I would argue that it's pretty rare in today's pop, which is something Charles Cornell commented on when he analyzed Toxic. And we do descending dominant chords in a pop song, are you kidding me? And it feels deliberate in Britney's discography as well, considering that another one of her songs about a toxic lover, Womanizer, also uses the major 3 slide down to the minor 1 progression. Perhaps the most devastating impact of this descending toxic chord progression is what happens when the bottom drops out and Katherine Howard has nowhere left to land. Now in Toxic, remember that Britney's chorus begins with the words Katherine Howard similarly reminds us of a kiss with her refrain. That's right, the smooching sound of a kiss and a sigh of ecstasy which represents that positive high feeling that Katherine Howard initially gets. But the problem with this is that each time that happens in the song, the kiss is unsupported by the accompaniment. Instead the band cuts out before they can resolve the music and she does the kiss sound alone. 
However, the band usually comes right back in to resolve the music back to minor one, thus allowing her to move on to the next verse in the song. But the final time Catherine Howard protests against her mistreatment, Catherine Howard is completely distraught at a life that has brought her nothing but abuse. And this time when she is crying through the ending of the song, she does the kiss again through her tears before her final sigh becomes her final breath. The band does not resolve the music this time. The song just ends with no resolution. Just a woman all alone, her future gone, tossed away and tarnished by history. Chances are when she first met Henry, she was between the ages of 15 and 17, and he was in his late 40s. We know that he was 49 when they got married, and she was most likely 16. The eldest she could have been upon her death was 21 when he was in his early 50s. All You Wanna Do represents a huge turning point in the show. Samantha Polly, who is the original Katherine Howard on Broadway, has said, I have to stay in this pop show mode, but I also have to make it clear things aren't what they seem. Theme. It isn't until the end of the song that people are like, I've been laughing the whole time, maybe I shouldn't. In fact, though the original album version of All You Wanna Do sounds like a regular, immaculately produced pop song, the only thing you wanna do is... <sighs> in the actual stage performance, Katherine Howard breaks down by the end, which you can hear in the live Broadway album. And here's Samantha Polly talking about how her distressed performance of All You Wanna Do came directly from the creators of Six. Particularly for All You Wanna Do, you had to tell me a lot, like, it doesn't have to sound good. It doesn't have to sound pretty. It's not pretty, it's ugly. But that ugliness is why the song feels truthful and connects with the audience. All You Wanna Do is a moment of catharsis. I don't know of a single woman in society who has not felt some kind of the pressures that Catherine explains and enumerates on throughout All You Want to Do. And I think it also hits so hard in part because Marlowe and Moss found the right musical metaphor that would eliminate the 500 year distance between us and Catherine Howard's tragic life. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're not already. I'd also like to thank my collaborators on this video, Margaret Hall, whose book Gemignani, Life and Lessons from Broadway and Beyond, a biography of Stephen Sondheim's right-hand man, is currently in print at major booksellers. Yolanda Draws, who provided the customized Catherine Howard artwork and animation, is an amazing artist also known for creating art for fans of Lin-Manuel Miranda. Go check out her website and B-Way Show, who provided some of the voiceover narration and B-roll footage. If you're a fan of Broadway and musical theater, you definitely need to subscribe to B-Way Show. Thanks also to my patrons on Patreon, including my newest patrons, Dolores Underwood and Allison Lee Gill. Please subscribe for more musical breakdowns, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.